Hello students, today we would be studying about the composition of milk or the chemical and physical properties of milk. Now as we have already studied or uh, um, seen the definition of milk which is a, flea, a fresh clean lactal secretion which is obtained when you completely milk a healthy animal excluding the milk that is obtained 15 days before or 5 days after calving. Now, what does that mean? Which means the milk should be practically free from cholesterol. It should, the solid non-fat should not be less than 8 quarter percentage and the milk fat should not be less than 3 quarter percentage. Now, this is the exact definition of milk. Uh, moving on to the composition. Now, before moving on to the composition of milk, we need to understand that the composition of milk will vary uh, due to certain factors. Now, what are those factors? It definitely depends on the individual of the animal. Each animal, the composition uh, of the milk would vary depending on the kind of the animal. The, depending on the breed of the animal, if you compare the Indian cows and the Jersey cows, definitely the composition of the milk has a variation. The stage of lactation, at what stage the cow uh, is in its period of lactation, the age of the cow and the health status of the cow, uh, cow or the um, milking animal. Apart from all these things, the herd management practice and the environmental condition also has a role in deciding or in having or in uh, uh, in the different uh, or varying composition of the milk. Now, if we see, India is the largest producer of milk and it is one of the leading exporter of skimmed milk powder. Now, coming to the physical properties. Now, when we talk about the physical properties, milk. The freezing point of milk is point, minus 0 0.5 degree centigrade and the boiling point is minus 100.2 degree centigrade. The viscosity of milk depends on the fat content of the milk. And uh, coming to the acidity, the pH of the milk ranges from 6.5 to 6.7. It, it could reach up to 6.9. Now the acidity is proportional to the amount of uh, microorganisms that is present in milk one of the factors and now moving on to the other uh, physical properties like the color the color of the milk is off white it could get yellowish because of the amount of fat um, more amount of fat the amount of yellow the golden yellow color increases now if you um, remove the fat content the milk has a bluish white tinge uh, sometimes you could find that the milk has a orangish uh, um, yellow tinge this could be because of the presence of carotin pigment now the taste it has a slightly sweetish taste because um, of the amount of sugar that is the lactose that is present in milk and the consistency as i told you viscosity it is because it is having uh, the amount of water in milk is more so it is liquidy in nature moving on to the chemical properties the different um, it can be categorized as water lactose milk fat milk proteins vitamins and minerals these are the various components that is present in milk if we have to study about each one of them milk it approximately has 86.6 to 87 percentage of water this is the regular or this is the range of amount of water that is present in milk now this water content that is present in milk does not provide any nutrition to the milk now coming to the milk fat now the presence of milk fat also depends on the various factors that we have seen now the milk fat has a range it can range from 2.5 to 6 percent and the the, uh, the precise amount or the exact amount should be 3 to 3.8 
about 98% of the milk the fat content of the milk is basically the triglycerols okay and also the fatty acids mono uh, monoglycerols and di acyl glycerols apart from that phospholipids sterols and hydrocarbons are also addition to the fat content that is present in milk um as i told you the 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 uh, color of the milk is because of the fat content not only that because of the pigments also the milk uh, gets the particular color for example the carotene moving on to the lactose the only source of uh, sugar um, in milk is the lactose and this is the only source of carbon that you get now it is a reducing sugar a reducing disaccharide now this sugar is responsible for the sweetish taste that we get okay now the percentage of sugar is ranges from 4.7 to 6.8 the exact percentage is 5 5% of lactose is generally present in milk moving on to the milk proteins now these milk proteins can be categorized into two one is called as a casein protein and the other one is called as the whey protein now what is the casein protein and whey protein uh, when a milk acidifies okay when milk is acidifies in the sense when the amount of acid content in milk increases or when the ph of the milk decreases the milk starts coagulating the milk protein starts coagulating <coughs> and the water starts separate out now the coagulated part of the milk is called as the casein protein and the water that separates out is called as a whey protein now what are the components that is present in casein protein it's 80% of bovine milk that's amino acid 80% of that casein uh, that protein is made up of amino acids carbohydrates calcium and phosphorus mainly it's amino acids carbohydrates and calcium now the whey protein if you say the whey protein i as i told you it's the water get that gets separated out so definitely the amount of water that comes out is more here so it's it made of the whey protein is made up of 94% of water 6% of to total solids now what are those uh, solids that is present in whey protein that's the lactose content 4.5% of lactose content is present uh 0.8% of protein that's the whey protein that's present and 0.7% of the minerals that is present so this is the whey protein so if when you talk about milk proteins you can categorize them as casein proteins and whey proteins that is when you do paneer for example the the solid part that gets separated out is a casein protein and the water that that you remove is the whey protein moving on to the vitamins and minerals now uh, vitamins uh, play a major role that is uh, during the metabolism uh, the reactions that is happening during the metabolism within the body uh uh the vitamins play a major role they also help in the oxygen transport and antioxidants okay uh, now coming to what are the things uh, what are the vitamins that is present if you say vitamin b1 that's thiamine vitamin b2 riboflavin vitamin b3 niacin and vitamin b5 b6 b12 are the main vitamins that is present of course they are present in trace amounts not in high percentage as we saw the other components vitamin c and folate are also present in milk now <clears throat> it also contains fat soluble vitamins that is they they would be able to solubilize the fat content that is vitamin a d e and apart from that the minerals that is present in milk are calcium magnesium phosphorus potassium selenium and zinc now the small i mean the trace amount of uh, minerals present are copper iron ma manganese and sodium it's not a major source but a very less amount of course calcium magnesium phosphorus potassium selenium and zinc are also present in trace amounts lesser than that is copper iron 
manganese and sodium now what is the function or what is the significance of this is that they main they have their main function in enzyme function no, enzyme um, properties that is during the uh, metabolic process during the reactions enzymes are required now for the enzymes to properly function these minerals help them to properly function also these mineral help in bone formation like for example your calcium and also they help in the um, oxygen transport maintaining the water balance throughout your body so these are the main functions of minerals now moving on to the um, one of the component that you need to know is snf now what is this snf snf is solid non fat now what do you mean by the solid non fat now if i separate out the fat content and if i separate out water all the other ingredients that remains is called as solid non fat snf now generally snf the snf that is present in milk should be around 8.5 percent now apart from this there is another thing that is present is total solids now may, uh, now what do you mean by these total solids now if i separate out water apart from water all the other ingredients that is present is called as the total solids now milk solids can be uh, categorized into solid non fat and total solid solid non fat is separating out the fat and the water content all the solid substances is snf separating out the water alone and all the other ingredients which remains in the milk is total solids so this is about the properties of milk now why is it important for us to know the various properties of milk because if we know the exact composition the range of the components that is present in milk we would be able to help to detect the adulteration of milk it helps in determining the quality of milk if the milk has been spoiled of course the components would vary there if the uh if the milk is adulterated again the components would vary now during the processing of milk and milk products now if i want to convert the milk to milk products now if i have an idea as to what are the ingredients or what is the composition of those ingredients present in milk it would be a i would be able to fortify the milk and it would help me to properly uh convert or process the milk into milk products it definitely helps in evaluating the physical changes in milk and milk products during processing so these are the various factors that help why we should know the properties of milk so that's it thank you students